Hi, I'm Tom Welch, and I'm going to talk to you today about the spiritual dimensions of marriage. Uh, I've been affiliated with NCC for several years, uh, first working as a psychiatrist, um, consulting and seeing clients, um, and more recently uh, as a spiritual director. I'm currently on staff at the Franciscan Spiritual Center in Milwaukee, and uh, I'm able to see um, some of the people who are interested in spiritual direction um, on site at NCC as well as the Franciscan Spiritual Center. Uh, a little bit later, I'll talk to you about what spiritual direction is. Uh, but to address uh, the spiritual direct, uh, dimensions of marriage, I'm going to talk to you about the concept of marriage being a covenant. Um, and I'd also like to talk to you about how you can incorporate um, spirituality into your relationships, um, both now and uh, during your marriage. Um, although I'll be drawing upon uh, uh, the Catholic Christian tradition uh, a lot, uh, the concepts that I'm going to present are pretty universal uh, and can be applied across faith traditions or uh, with people who don't necessarily have a faith tradition. So let's talk about what a covenant is and how marriage uh, is a covenant and not just a contract. Um, as part of your marriage, you will be entering into a contract um, in the eyes of the state uh, that gives you certain rights and responsibilities under the law. Um, and you've probably already entered into various contracts with loans or jobs. Um, but uh, a covenant really is more than a mere contract or a legal uh, agreement between two parties. A covenant always expresses a relationship between people. And it's a special kind of relationship. Uh, in the spiritual or religious sense, marriage as a covenant is a sacred agreement between two mutually respectful parties. Uh, in the marriage covenant, Couples form with each other an intimate union of life and love together. The covenant serves to unify the two halves uh, into a whole, uh, and it requires unreserved giving of each person's self. Um, that's manifested in part um, by showing each other um, both honor and respect um, in private and in public. The, the uh, covenant relationship you're entering into is so close and so intimate that it will profoundly influence your whole future. Uh, the ideal for a covenant, although it may take some time to be realized, um, is for you to belong entirely to each other and to be of one mind and one heart. And that idea of being of one heart uh, can serve as a kind of shorthand uh, for a covenant. Um, it's a type of spiritual connection, a union of your spiritual selves or of your spirits. Um, so there are many ways to nurture your spiritual selves. Uh, and your spiritual union together. Um, perhaps you already have spiritual practices like prayer, meditation, yoga, uh, or other ways um, that help you to um, get away from distractions uh, and feel closer to that entity that some call God or spirit or uh, creator, whatever term uh, applies to that, that entity that's uh, loving and caring and greater than ourselves. You might nurture yourselves by reading uh, sacred literature like the Bible or other types of writing, um, maybe sitting with uh, inspirational music or art, um, or even taking a walk in nature. Being close to creation uh, can be a real spiritual experience. And you can do those both alone and together. Attending services at places of worship um, allows you to be part of a larger community that can support your covenant and uh, allows you to be around other people maybe who have had more experience or more uh, time uh, in that covenant um, and who could be resources for you. Um, in the Catholic tradition, uh, we celebrate uh, the sacraments of uh, including communion, reconciliation, and uh, some of you may be um, uh, going to be receiving the, uh, the sacrament of holy matrimony, which is really an outward sign of that covenant commitment that you're making to each other. Uh, one specific resource, uh, additionally to draw upon uh, for uh, nurturing the spiritual dimensions uh, of your marriage, is uh, spiritual direction. So spiritual direction is a companionship uh, by the director uh, and another person, and we call that person the directee. Um, this companionship enables the directee to pay more attention to God's presence and activity in his or her everyday life. Spiritual direction can be especially helpful at times of transition, such as marriage, uh, or uh, when one is discerning other important life choices, um, and sometimes just when one feels a, a restlessness or um, 
uh, is searching for meaning. Um, although uh, spiritual direction is somewhat similar to counseling or therapy, um, which both involve talking about important issues in, in someone's life, um, uh, spiritual direction is different uh, in that um, there isn't any um, evaluation or diagnosis or treatment. Um, in a monthly spiritual direction session, the director and directee focus on the presence of God in their lives uh, and might uh, incorporate discussions of prayer and meditation, other practices uh, that uh, the directee might use uh, in growing uh, their relationship with God. So if you'd like to learn more about spiritual direction uh, or would like to set up an initial visit here at NCC or at the Franciscan Spiritual Center, um, please contact us. There's information available uh, at NCC. So thank you very much for your attention and I wish you the very best in your marriages. Thanks.